Hey, it's Doug. Welcome into the CCM Cafe, an opportunity to spend some time with Helen Smallbone and talk about a book and a movie and maybe some of her kids that you've heard on the radio as well. Behind the Lights, The Extraordinary Adventure of a Mom and Her Family is the book. Helen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, full disclosure here, I love your family. <laughs> I've had oppor- I love my family too. I've had opportunity to hang out with your husband over the years who is casting his gaze on us now and remembering being in radio when I first came to Nashville 25 years ago and I had heard this song and this whole cassette called God from Rebecca St. James and I was so like I was going to meet her and I was a little nervous and just over the years of interacting with with Rebecca and with for King and Country I'm so moved by how much God is put first and for full disclosure before we started this interview Helen prayed for us And for my 25 years in the industry, Rebecca never did not pray before. I mean, nothing against anyone else, but she always, whether we were on the phone or in person, uh, she always took it to prayer. Mm -hmm. And I think um, uh, she did it because she felt so inadequate to the task. And I think the only reason really why she probably ever pursued music was because God opened the doors and because she wanted to serve him so it was a part of her love for Jesus in what she did with her music and I think her genuine authentic um, honest heart always came through in everything she did Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I admired her because she did that in front of secular um, like newspapers uh, journalists wherever wherever she was she said do you mind if we pray first she would always ask I don't know that she was ever refused, but I do know that she was, wasn't was always partnered with and people were like, what? what? If you need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that obviously speaks to so generational faith. I mean, that, that came from how I you... I think she's braver than me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because she did set the stand. She did set that, um, I don't know, marker as a part of her life. And I've seen her, again, in scenarios where she's not warmly received or she's being not in fellow environment, fellowship environments, mm-hmm. that uh, she stepped out and and done it anyway. And I've, I've admired her for her. Wow. Such a testimony. So the book, of course, Behind the Lights, is mm-hmm. taking us through your incredible story from Australia and here and all the miracles and all the things. Um, what was the inspiration to actually put it on paper? <laughs> I mean, over the years... Uh, we've mentioned some of our stories or we've talked about some of our stories in different scenarios. And invariably, when we would share a story, people would just like shake their heads and be like, oh, you guys need to write a book. And if for whatever reason, I always I always knew that it was only not, I mean, maybe others will write books too, but I always knew it was going to be me. And maybe I'm the one telling the story, so I thought that. And then um, it just never seemed right. And then over COVID, we were actually doing a documentary on the family. And David and I were being interviewed at the farm, our little farm uh, outside Nashville. And I was, after being interviewed, we'd sat down for lunch and I'd started sharing some stories. And both the producer and our son, Ben, who was the director, said, gosh, you need to write, you need to write these stories down. I mean, you need to write a book. For whatever reason, in that moment, it just changed. And I'm like, Yep, I do. And I went back to the and said, find me a publishing deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and, and it was, as people sort of think, uh, it would uh, be a hard process, but I was very well partnered with. Um, I had a great uh, co-writer. And uh, frankly, it was quite a pleasure to be able to do it. And I think it was, it's from my perspective. So if other books come out, it's going to be from other people's perspectives. <laughs> And nobody else spoke into it. At one point when I'd finished the outline, like I'd finished the book and I was starting to get a little nervous about talking about people's lives, families' lives, kids' lives, I thought maybe we should all just, maybe my memory is different from somebody else's and maybe we, I need to have someone else read it. And my co-writer very wisely said, no, no, this is your memoir. They've got, they've got time. They can write what they want as they remember and everybody's going to remember things slightly different. This is your memoir. They'll spoil it if you if you have them read it. So it was quite the occasion when the book got in my hand 
and I'm sort of, I did write a frontest piece like a, I don't know, like a dedication to each of the kids and gave them their own copy, but it was with <laughs> fear and trepidation as to what they were going to think. And I'm not even sure if all of them have read it. Well, that was going to be the question. Okay, so not... Because I think it was too... I think they read maybe the parts they wanted to read or they wanted to check out. Uh, I think they just... But it, they just said some of those times were just... Uh, I think probably before Rebecca especially were just too hard. And she said, I I just, I just, don't... I'll read bits, but I'm not going to read it all. Mm-hmm. I understand though Libby had a unique reaction. Uh, Libby... Uh, I think Libby felt very... Um, I mean, her journey is so different from anybody else's in the family. Libby, uh, as the book explains, has, has suffered from chronic illness uh, since probably she was about 15. Uh, she's had Lyme disease, which if, is a really quite horrific illness uh, in its gamut. And I think uh, she's the only one other really, I mean, Rebecca and the boy for King Country, Joel and Luke, I have their stories about how they rose to... I suppose being signed, but Libby's is the only chapter on somebody, on one person specifically, not their journey, just one person, because her story was just has just been so unique, and I think relates to so many people out there who are doing it tough. Um, and her response, I think, was one of maybe being seen because she hasn't been seen a lot, um, of of being humbled that I understood more of her journey because uh, she's she's had a challenging journey even for those who've got large families out there being the youngest in a large family it's not easy yeah it's not easy that's a tough road <laughs> without the illness like it's just a tough road anyway well to back up a little bit too so the foundation of the family obviously you and david tell us a little bit about that love story well david actually my fa- my my pastor uh, my pastor my father was a uniting church uh, actually he was methodist church pastor and uh, so we had a, a little church. We were when I was in my teens. We uh, were at a little church on the north side of Sydney. Um, it was a very historic building, and uh, David uh, ended up coming uh, one Sunday night to the service. Um, sat behind my mother, myself, my brother, and sister-in-law. And uh, my mum was a very good pastor's wife and would go and meet anybody that was new and so she went out and sort of said hello to him after the service and then she came back and told me oh there's this young guy over that was at church last night uh, this tonight and I've invited him back to the coffee house to have coffee and I was back in the passage at this point and I'm just like I'm ready for bed I'm just over it and so I then decided to get dressed and believe it or not I had a a galah which is a parrot and I took the galah out of my its cage and took it across to the coffee house. What on earth? A sixteen year old is going to think. And and as I'm walking in, he walks out and says, "Oh, <laughs> I mean, I must have looked aside." Ah, and and he walks out and says, "Oh, so you're Helen?" And I'm like, "How do you know that?" And there were photos on inside of each um, youth group member and with our names and so we we talked for a while and then our, that was the that was the beginning but out of a big mega city of Sydney right that tiny little church wow and so you met when you were 16 he's 21 and he was 21 <laughs> and then how long until I think we day we got I, I got married just after I turned 20 okay so uh, you know we we he actually I uh, lived in a caravan or a camper in our, at our house for a couple of years, so we'd gotten to know each other pretty well. Um, and uh, I think we come from very similar families, and uh, obviously it was a divine meeting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Divine meeting. It seems maybe cliché to ask, but when you think about how long you guys have been together and for all the things that you've been through, some of which we'll talk about, but most of which is when you buy the book, watch the movie you don't want to give away too much um what's the secret to staying together and through seven kids and through bankruptcy and through change in countries and i mean your faith has to play a big part i i can't i don't know how people live life without jesus i honestly don't life's hard life's hard relationships are hard i know why god puts us in families because it it molds off those rough 
edges that each of us have, we get mirrored in relationship and we see ourselves. Um, and I, yeah, uh, but I, I just think it's the foundation of faith. Um, as I said, we had very similar families. Um, he's the oldest in his family. I mean, the crazy, the crazy similarities. He's the oldest in his family and it's three boys and a girl. Okay. I'm the youngest in my family and it's three boys and a girl. We both, when we met, had dogs named Chip. Really? Our fathers were both in the Methodist church. Uh, his father was a lay preacher. My father was a preacher. I mean, bizarre. Wow. But he lived in 500 miles away. Like, he lived in a whole other state. Okay. And he was moved to Sydney uh, for his job, knew nobody at 21, and had had a foundation of faith. And so he was one <laughs> He was trying to find his place in this big mega city and uh, happened to have a girlfriend down the street from where I lived and would drive by the church and think, mm, I need to go into that church one day. And see we did. The Lord works in mysterious ways. The Lord works in mysterious ways. And frankly, we were only at that church for another three months. And then my dad moved to another church further north in Sydney. And so even, even the timing, mm -hmm. like... Just yeah, crazy. small little window. Crazy. Small little window. It's a God thing. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, too, that you say that because I remember uh, interviewing Joel and Luke at one point and uh, the, sharing the impact that it had on them for the Christmas and for, as they were telling the story, sort of the childlike exuberance of, of course, <laughs> Santa's going to find us, Mom. You're worried about nothing. <laughs> yeah. And then to have them take off. That is awesome. It's amazing. So, yeah, that, that I mean... Yeah, there was a bunch of miracles. I mean, we had groceries Brim give us. We, we had our house filled with furniture from a Sunday school class. Um, the, the, I suppose the other really staggering story to me is um, we went as a family to a homeschooling group at, at, um, uh, at Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, we Australians don't have Thanksgiving. I mean, it's just an American holiday. Yeah. We know nothing about it. We rock up and there's all this, you know, and it's just like mind-blowing, really. And then I got talking to um, the guy whose home it was at, John, who had to rent, borrow I'd like a church band to pick us all up. To, and David and Rebecca were actually in Australia at the time. Um, and so it was my, myself, my parents were here because I was due to have the baby, um, and they knew David was going back to Australia, so they didn't want me to be over here by myself. Um, so it's six, five kids, my parents and me. So they had to get a church van to take us to this dinner. And, you know, I'm, we're tired and I'm looking for John and I'm like, where is he? Like, uh, and so eventually I find him and I'm like, hey, do you mind taking us home? And he holds up a set of keys and says, you can take yourself home. And I said, what do you mean? And I said, and he said, I want to, I feel like God wants you to, me to give you this car. And I'm like, no, no, you can't, you can't do that. I said, I found out from the neighbors beside us who were loaning us their car. If I have an accident, then you will be financially responsible for my accident. And the, the neighbors had said, I'll drive you places, but you can't borrow the car anymore. And so I'm like, you can't be responsible for my driving. Like, I, I, I'm not going to let that. And he said, God, if you have an accident and I get sued and I lose everything, then that's God's will for my life. Take the car. He wants you to have it. And I get downstairs. For one, we're a family of eight, soon to be nine. We don't fit into a little. It's, it's a van. It's a Toyota Previa, brand new. So they had given us their family van that they had bought for their family and they'd given it to us. And that's mind-blowing. And the faith of that is mind-blowing. That it's, you know, because I'd, I'd given him every excuse to be like, no, don't give me the car. And he said, no, if I lose everything, so be it. Man, what a testimony as far as uh, combating the, the excuses of the enemy when you feel prompted by God, then you kind of Obedience. step back. Obedience. Wow. Staggering. So, yeah, there was a number of miracles that just blew us away. And, yeah, so it's just crazy. Was it hard to pick? Were there any stories that, that are not in there? Did, did you feel like you were able to? Um, in the book? Yeah. Um, no, I pretty much tried to put as many as I could. Now, 
I'm going to have people who read it and they'll be like, you forgot this one, or you forgot that one. But, you know, you've just got to prayerfully feel like God uh, is leading you. Excellent. We're talking about the book Behind the Lights. Um, what would you hope would be the takeaway after someone reads the book, a, a conversation they may have with someone else who's read it? What do you think is bubbling up? I I really would like the takeaway from somebody reading the book, um, being able to trust God in a deeper way. Um, God took everything away from us so that we had to rely on him. But I know that there are a number of people out there who are being called by God to get out of their comfort zones, to get out of where they're in a, what I say they're providing for themselves and trusting him for some step that looks really too scary. And my takeaway is don't be afraid. Like I would, what I would want them to take away is don't be afraid. God is with you. And if he's calling you to do that thing, he will look after you. It's, it's a promise. Just trust him. I'm very thankful on our journey that I probably didn't have to. That's a scary step to actually make it. We were forced, you know, things taken away. We were forced to just take the next step, which was coming here, which was, you know, doing menial jobs to put food on the table, which was working together, you know, just sort of just taking his next step. But I know that there are a lot of us who are living safely, what I call in our little box, doing all the things that we know we should be doing, having a job, having insurance. We didn't even have health insurance. Um, Putting kids in school, providing their college fund, you know, doing all the right things. But there's that nudge on their heart that God wants something more and they're too scared. And my hope is that somebody might just say, you know what, God looked after him. I know God's calling me to do this. I'm going to do it. Well, I know you've described yourself as a glass half full person, mm-hmm. uh, an optimistic person. Mm-hmm. What would you say to parents that find themselves in challenging situations as you found when you were first here and there's no beds and kids are just doing whatever and we call the book Extraordinary Adventure? <laughs> How does that all come together? Well, I, I am a very much a glass half full person because I think perspective is everything. And I think with God on our journey with us, how can we have a negative perspective? How can we? He's with us. Things are tough, but he's there. You know, he's always there. So I have a mindset now of always wanting to look for the hand of God. Every day, try and find where his provision is. Is it someone we need to talk to? Is it someone we need to pray for that's in serving us at the grocery shop that's got a lousy face? You know, like, is it... Is it, is it the flower that we walk by in our walk? Is it, what, what is it? There's something, but it, it, is it a going out at night? I know, lately, I've, I've got to take my little dog by leash. We live on a farm, so usually he's just thrown out the door to go potty, but maybe I've got to take him out on a leash. And it's, I, I look up and the, the moon and the stars, there's always something that just reminds us he's with us, he's there, he's faithful. And so that would be my encouragement. Have a positive attitude because we've got nothing to be negative about. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, beyond the book, there's a movie. There's a movie. So let's talk about the movie. (laughs) There's one thing to to write a memoir of my my memories of of our life, but the movie thing, Doug, that's that's going to a whole other level. (laughs) Well, so the movie, you, you talked about the documentary that led into the book. And then how does that become something that's going to be on the big screen? Yeah, how does that become something? Um, the documentary got definitely got us thinking a lot. And the documentary hasn't come out yet, but it will come out. But the documentary definitely got us thinking a lot about our story. And then um, I think in 2019, we actually went back for King Country, went back to Australia uh, for a concert tour. And we got talking a lot too. And I think it's between maybe the book might have stimulated them thinking more between the documentary definitely and the tour. They recognised that the story needed to... A lot of people don't read anymore. So the book, it'll reach some people. And then a lot of people think, oh, it's just a woman's book. And that, you know, like it's it's to it's, it's a certain clientele. Sure. 
um, where a movie reaches the gamut. And I wonder whether the visual lasts longer with us even than just reading a book. And so they recognised that this that, that the story needed to be told because it would reach people in a wider way and a more deeper way. And so Joel and a screenwriter, a screenwriter actually first up um, wrote the book, uh, sorry, wrote the movie, and then Joel came in and partnered with him and honed it. Um, and so um, we, that was, uh, what are we, 20, that was 22. And then I think in about August of 22, a couple of months before they're due to start filming, uh, Joel sort of sheepishly hands the screen, <laughs> the screenplay to David and me just to sort of be like, you, maybe you might want to read it. And I'm very thankful that we really did not have any input in it um, because I think it was good to have uh, Richie who wrote it and Joel, uh, Richie being a total outside voice, Joel being a little bit more familiar, obviously, with our family, with nuances in the family, with uh, he brought in some pretty great stuff. Um, David just looked at it and thought, I'm too strong-willed. If I read this, I'm going to impact it too much. I I'm not visual, so reading something, I can't see what it's going to look like anyway. But in reading it, I thought, you know what, they did a very credible job. Um, I think it, it really does capture the elements of what reality was for us. Um, only thing I went back to both Richie and Joel, and I just said, just be careful to not take out the miraculous out of the movie. Because I said we would not have been able to survive. We could not have done it if we did not know that God was with us, if we did not see his hand, if we did not see him providing those miracles. It was too hard. We would have just gone home. I, I think, and I, and I was scared because a lot of times in Christian or faith uh, movies, once they put the miraculous in, it sort of gets this corny, like, oh, cheesy and I think and so I there's that balance I suppose keeping it real but keeping not having that cheesy corny element and I think they've done an incredible job the miraculous shows up um it's not cheesy it's very real I I, I mean yeah I'm glad we sort of didn't speak into it in, in any other way well having seen it I would agree it, 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 it's very well done, very well, real, very relatable. Even as we were talking about before the interview, the idea of someone watching it gravitating towards particular characters, towards your character, towards your husband's character. Um, and I guess for those that don't know, the son plays the father. So Joel <laughs> is David, which is. to me is just is. amazing. It is amazing. What, what was that like? To... Well, David David has a lot of uh, rhetoric and uh, idiosyncrasies that are easy to take off. And I think over the last few years that the actor in Joel um, has been coming out and on David's, David's uh, 74 right now, but on his 70th birthday, uh, Joel just took off David. I mean, he got up, put a wig on, got his coat, like, and he just mimicked in this uh, improv thing his father had everybody in stitches um, and David is just crying. He is laughing so much. And I don't know if it was from that that he was like, you know what, I could probably do this pretty good. <laughs> um, he does play, but he's very credible as, as David. The miracle, I think, one of the, and God, there were numbers of miracles on the movie set, numbers of miracles, I, it, a staggering. But the biggest miracle was the lady who played me. They only got her like 10 days before filming. Really? And she nails me. Nails me. Couldn't think of anybody better to play me. Now, I think I heard that you said that each of the actors wanted to meet their respective. <laughs> they did. I, I don't know. We didn't spend, I didn't spend much time with her. I think Joel had probably filled her in on who he sees me to be. Um, and then we did have a day where all the family came to the movie set and they met their counterpart, which was fairly significant. So I guess unlike the book, has the entire family seen the movie? <laughs> yes. We sat down um, May last year and everybody saw the movie together. 
um, before the sort of final edit uh, took place. And uh, I think everybody takes something slightly different away from it. Um, I think everybody was very uh, touched, uh, felt that it was very real. Awesome. I was very proud of it. Well, something to be proud of. It's very well done. Um, obviously, the focus now is on the movie. I don't know if there's anything foreshadowing that speaks of what's down the road for you or the family. Or I don't know, Doug. That's a trust walk. I mean, I'm I'm enjoyed sort of being like, go back, you know, you get off the stage. Excellent. Great for you. <laughs> and, and, you know, Joel and Luke, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> but I've always been the behind the scenes one, which I suppose is why the book's called Behind the Lights, because that's been my happy, safe place. And now, you know, I, I, you said earlier, people getting out of their boxes. I'm, I, I think God's talking, telling me I've got to get out of my comfort zones. I've got to get out of my little box that I feel secure and safe in and just trust him for what he has. And so I think I'm in a season for me personally where I'm saying yes mm -hmm. and see what he does. So it's got, is it feeling good? Because, you know, you talk about being behind the scenes, but I mean, you're involved in podcasts and interviews <laughs> and all over and here and there. And I'm like, wow, that's, you're in front of the lights. Is that intimidating? Is that a little, rewarding? Is A bit of both. I mean, talking about story. Whenever you're talking about what God's done in your life, it's always it's always a pleasure. So talking about story is is sweet. Uh, getting up and speaking probably less sweet, um, but I do feel my heart and God has given me a passion, probably a growing passion over the last ten years as I've diminished in my parenting or my parenting responsibilities within the family. He's now given me a passion for mums. And so the podcast has come out of that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm speaking more to mums. Um, and he's growing that love. I think the movie is very encouraging for families. I, if we look at families today, families are under the enemy's attack. They're falling apart. Our marriages are suffering. And so I want to be able to encourage uh, mums, families, relationships to hang in there because the best years are ahead of you. You know, the best years are ahead of you. Dave and I have been now married 48 years. The movie actually comes out, believe it or not, in our 49th wedding anniversary. Crazy. That was Lionsgate. That was not us. But God works. It's just God's, I see it as God's smile. It's sort of like, I don't know. He's, he's sort of arranging these details and thinking, look at what I'm going to do here. Um, and uh, I'm so aware that so many give up through the hard times, through some strife. You know, when the stress is on, kids are little, so many demands, tired, pulled in different directions, guys making their career happen, not bringing their best back into the home that they forget that the best years are still to come. See, flow, go, grow, face your issues, face your stuff, deal with it, grow, because the years of growing old with somebody who knows you, who loves you and who you love, I have to be the sweetest that there are. So many miss out on it. So I'm hoping the, the movie finishes with a quote uh, from Mother Teresa, which is incredibly significant and the core of what the movie is about. If you want to change the world, go home and love your family. And I think to me, that's if 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 the movie can help husbands, wives, kids, families love each other better, then it's been a, a very adequate tool in God's hands. Excellent. Well, thank you for the time. Thank you. That's good.